Danny Garcia goes in on Timothy Bradley at his press conference for the Ivan Redcash fight. Hear what uh, Tim Bradley had to say afterwards about PBC fighters? Yeah, I seen that. Um, I used to like Tim Bradley. I don't respect him more, though. He ain't nothing but a top-ranked puppet who fought top-ranked fighters his whole career. He never fought no one outside of top rank. Since you so worried about come out of retirement, you a top rank fighter, fight Terrence Crawford. It'll be easy, for, easy fight to be made. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel, donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash app, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel, and I really appreciate it. Shout out to everybody that's left Super Chats. Venmo Cash App, we working. You know, it's we're closing the year, and 2019 was a great year. 2020 looks like it might even be a better year. You know, we've been doing good with this new media stuff. Now, Danny Garcia, he got his words in about Tim Bradley. He was asked his response. You guys heard the clip at the beginning, and he was asked about what Tim Bradley said on the Terrence Crawford telecast. He said, "Did it get back to you what Tim Bradley had to say?" And I made a video about it. Tim Bradley basically said everyone outside of Deontay Wilder, they're cowards over there with PBC. None of them want to fight um, Terrence Crawford. He's the best welterweight. And, you know, put your big boy pants on, fight him. And he was screaming. He said Terrence Crawford's begging for the fight. Yeah, he's begging. He's begging. And he's going to keep begging until when you guys fight him. And you guys need to fight him. Woom, 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 woom. And he's doing a lot of it was like a WWE type of uh, call out. And, you know, it's weird for an inactive fighter who never fought any of these other guys to be advocating for that. And a lot of people call Tim Bradley and Uncle Tom and Coon, different things like that, because it seems super company, man. He himself, when he was an active fighter, didn't fight. And this is what I told you. He didn't fight none of those PBC guys. Danny Garcia, you heard the clip at the beginning, said the same thing. I told you, new media, we control the narrative. It just makes so much sense. I say this stuff. The video's been out. I don't know if Danny particularly seen it, but it doesn't matter. The the narrative, we control that. Here in America, we control that. We put out the most facts, show receipts, you know, the stuff we say, we're we're open for discussion, but you gotta refute it with some real stuff. And you hear professional fighters and trainers and such and former fighters, active fighters, champions, undefeated guys, all types of people saying what I say on new media. You know, in the Eagles Army, the type of message we, we say. Danny Garcia verbatim said what I said. Tim Bradley didn't fight none of these PBC fighters, so where is he getting this? Bradley, I mean, Garcia took it a step further, said Bradley should come out of retirement if he got that much to get off his chest. Why don't he fight Terrence Crawford? You know, and we know that's not going to happen. They're allegedly boys. It's just Tim Bradley's behavior is odd. You look at Andre Ward reaction. He was just like allowed Tim Bradley to go off on these rants. Tim Bradley, I, I like the fighter, but the commentator is just, you know, it's kind of, it's like Stephen A. Smith level. I don't know if ESPN's gassing him to, to be like that, but all that yelling and screaming and, you know, over the top commentary, I don't even think that's needed. Like Roy Jones never acts like this ongoing. You know, there might be certain, man, I'm, I'm sick of it. If you want to move up weight, you got to move up weight. All of a sudden, everybody went back in my day, they didn't, you know, and he's going to say with emphasis and passion, but he doesn't get all loud with every single topic. That's like Tim Bradley's like jaw rule or something. He just keeps screaming about these various topics. And the bottom line is Crawford, you know, realistically, I've seen this coming a mile away. He re-signed with top rank. He made his bed. He got a lie in it, you know, until the, the bridge is mended and top rank and Al Heyman start working together on more fights. It is what it is. It's no different than top rank fighters, like I've been saying. When they had a welterweight stable full of Brandon Rios, Ruslan Provotnikov, Mikey Garcia, um, he wasn't a welterweight, but you know, I'm just saying they had Pacquiao's and Marquez and Tim Bradley, even. And you didn't see Brandon Rios when he was undefeated fight Adrian Broner when he was undefeated. You didn't see Marquez versus Broner. Broner called out Marquez. People, how soon we forget. And none of those fights were came into fruition. Top rank didn't send no offers, but now that they're down and they have this talent in Crawford and no one to feed him to, no one to make money off of, 
because there's not the desirable fights over there. Now all of a sudden they're sending Tim Bar Tim Barkin Bradley as like almost like a junkyard dog, like guard dog to try to create pressure for Heyman. And it's not how that works because people see right through it. And that's kind of what it sounds like with Danny Garcia. He's like, he didn't fight none of these people either. You know, why didn't Danny Garcia get a shot at Tim Bradley? Why didn't Tim Bradley fight Floyd? Why didn't Tim Bradley fight Errol Spence, Keith Thurman? There were great fights for Tim Bradley. He didn't fight none of them, but yet he's screaming and demanding that um, Terrence Crawford get somebody, knowing the politics. And the, the thing I haven't understood for all the people that say, oh, ego, this is BS. Let's take it to the UK for a second. We know Eddie Hearn doesn't get along with Frank Warren. Between the two stables, they have some really good fights and not none of them have been made right why can't we see frank warren work with eddie hearn to make daniel dubois versus anthony joshua daniel dubois versus dillian white anthony yard versus buatsi right how come they haven't made any of these types of fights between the two the people tyson fury frank warren fighter they never made aj and tyson fury but when it comes to the double standards and Al Heyman, Al Heyman just got to make, abandon whatever plan he has for Errol Spence and Danny Garcia and all the top welterweights that he has. You know, he has to not do his own thing and try to help Bob Arum, who's talked reckless about him and called him uh, a fake make-believe person and cancer of boxing. He got to rush to make that fight. You see how that happens? You see how that works? But ain't nobody clamoring for Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn to make the top fights. You know, when Billy Joe Saunders was with Frank Warren, he didn't fight Demetrius Andrade, an Eddie Hearn fighter. They tried to, and that was only because of a mandatory. But it's never happened to this day because he failed a drug test. They didn't make Caleb Smith, an Eddie Hearn fighter, with Billy Joe Saunders. I know Billy Joe Saunders is now with Eddie Hearn, and they still ain't made the fight. But they definitely didn't make it when Frank Warren was there. So what's the difference? How come there's only pressure for Al Heyman to open up his vast stable but nobody else in the game is making the important fights and sending their guys over. Yeah, they're making a couple Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas and stuff like that. And the funny thing with Heyman is he has sent guys over. Danny Jacobs is fighting this Friday on a Friday against Chavez Jr. He's with he's working with DAZN in rematch room. Same thing with Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr. is an Al Heyman advised fighter. And he fighting on a DAZN card. Andy Ruiz, he fighting on a DAZN card, two of them back to back, one in Saudi Arabia. But even the first one, he sent Andy Ruiz to fight Joshua. He could have just said, man, make your own fight. Put Joshua Povetkin 2 or Joshua versus Michael Hunter. You know, use your own stable. So, you know, the lies have to stop, you know. And it's just so funny that the coincidentally the guy who's not even a, a real promoter he's an advisor and happens to be black is the guy that's getting all this heat meanwhile oscar de la hoya is getting duis and getting sued and he's doing interviews that have contradictions eddie hearn you know he's not getting in trouble with the law necessarily but there's several interviews and you pit that interview with the next interview you'll find tons of lies and contradictions and things like that that don't add up and these guys keep saying it. Bob Arum, same thing. You've heard him say one thing and say, I, I detonated the Crawford-Pacquiao fight because I didn't want to see Pacquiao get hurt. Then he'll say Pacquiao didn't want to take the fight because he, he didn't want money. You know, just contradicting things. But somehow, some way, it's always Al, Al Heyman's fault. Funny how that works. Danny Garcia goes in on Tim Bradley. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We definitely work. And if you love what I'm doing, smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego Sign Off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.